Hello Owls, I'm Mrs. Harris and I'm going to be working with you today with a school mural. So each of you are going to get a wooden tile that has a feather drawn on it and you should have had your name on the back and then I want you to sign your name on the bottom using a sharpie. You're going to bring this tile down and I will meet you on the stage. When you get to the stage, we're going to have stations. So on the station you're going to have a paper similar to this. We're going to have a water cup that you're going to use to rinse your paintbrushes. You're going to have some type of paper plate to mix paints and then paper towels and we'll have a variety of paintbrushes. Notice there's different sizes um, and different shapes that you can choose. It's up to you what paintbrush you'd prefer. And then you'll see all these little cups and these cups have lids but there's a variety of different color paints and you're free to use any color and as many colors as you'd like for your painting that you're going to do on your tile. So as you're using them, you can leave the lids off, but as soon as you're done using the paint, make sure the lid gets back on and then they stay nice and fresh for our next artist coming along. On your tile, like I said, we have a feather that's been drawn. On the back, we should see your name. And on the front, you should have written your name on the bottom. Now, if you haven't, I have a Sharpie and you can get that for me when you come down. There's two different style feathers and they might be, um, your feather might be facing a different angle than the feathers you see here and that's fine. You get to choose what design you're going to do on your feather when you paint. And so I wanted to go through the process of painting with you and how it works best. So on your paintbrush, I usually grab a medium-sized paintbrush and I use this like I would a spoon to dip the color of paint that I want. Now you're going to need an amount of paint um, enough to paint the section of the feather you want in that particular color. But this feather is small, so don't grab too much paint. You can always grab more. So you'll notice in between grabbing colors, I rinse my paintbrush and then I dry it off. I just tap it on the paper towel. The reason I want to rinse it is because I don't want to mix colors as I'm grabbing paints from my little cups. And I want to be careful that I tap it off, tap the water off so that I don't get a lot of soupy water in the paint cup. Now you'll notice you don't want to dip your paintbrush into the metal section. Um, that gets the paintbrush really messy and it's hard to handle. So if that happens, rinse it off and then notice how I'm rolling the paintbrush in the paper towel and I'm not scrubbing. I want to be really careful with the bristles so that they stay really nice and new. So notice that I'm tapping it, it's clean, the bristles go in one direction so I wouldn't scrub back and forth. And as I'm drying, I'm really helping that um, I'm tapping it. So with this blue bristle, I really scrubbed it and that would mess up those bristle tips. So if you rinse and you're still getting the color of paint on your paper towel, that means there's paint in the brush and that paint has plastic in it. And so if we don't fully rinse it, it could dry and ruin the paintbrush. Okay, so that's how we're going to clean up our brushes every time we use them. And notice I um, folded my paper towel in half. So when I start painting, I ideally like to use a small paintbrush because this is a small feather. And the color that I'm going to use here is green. And the first thing I like to do is outline the edges. And this kind of helps me stay in line. It's like when I color in a coloring book, I tend to outline first and then I fill in in between. Some of the paints you might need to use two coats once you're done filling in um, the paint. So you don't have to paint really thick, but notice how I can see some of my brush strokes. I can let that dry and then come back and add a second coat if I'd like. Um, notice that you can mix colors. So I have this blue and I wanna make it lighter. So as I'm mixing the blue and the white, because this is my paint on my little paint tray, my mixing tray. I don't necessarily have to rinse my paintbrush. I can dab in other colors um, and that's fine. And then I'm going to add my second color. So I want to be careful not to make it so that my hand's touching the wet paint. I really want to be careful that the paint stays within the lines of the drawn feather. And so um, that's a, a big thing that we want to keep that gray background clean if we can. If you get paint on the edges of the drying, we're going to retrace this feather once it's drawn. The adult, you will have an adult do that. And so don't stress about that. But now once your paint is dry, like the green section, it dries pretty fast. The wood soaks up the paint. I can go back through and I can add other textures or patterns, different colors 
Um, like I said, I could add a second coat of green if I wanted. I wanted to show you, if you want to do fine lines, I use the tip of the paintbrush. If I press it down flat, it gets wider, but if I just use the tip, I can get really fine lines. Um, that might be hard for some, so don't be frustrated. Just skip the fine lines and go with thicker lines. So again, you have the freedom to do any pattern, any style, any color choice that you like when you're painting your feather. An important thing to think about when you're choosing your colors and what kind of design you want to paint is what tones you have. And what I mean is it looks interesting if something has a dark color, a medium color, and a light color. So the gray background would be a medium to a medium light color. So if all the colors that you paint were medium light, your design on your feather might not pop. See this mural is going to be hung way up high and it's going to be far away. And so we want some interesting designs that you can see. So if you have a lot of tiny detail, we might not be able to see it. But more importantly, I like to have variety of those different darks, mediums, and lights. And so you'll notice I have a darker green, a medium blue, and then a bright yellow. And the yellow is a lighter color. And on top of the yellow, I've decided to make some interesting dark lines so that they really show up. Um, this helps make the interesting design really pop for everybody who walks by. Now you'll see right here, I just picked a green and I painted little stripes and you couldn't see it from far away because it was the same tone as the blue. So then I'm going back through and I picked a darker green to make my little marks. And I'm going to show you a close up. Now you can see how different the green is on the blue. So that's one thing to be careful of. Now the last feather I just painted had a lot of different colors and stripes and patterns going on. I also wanted to show you that sometimes simple also works really nice. So I've chose to pick three colors and then I'm just making really simple design. And so I would suggest when you paint your feather, let's choose at least three colors. If we just do one or two colors, that will work but it's not as interesting. So I would say as artists, let's start with three colors and then you can do more if you'd like. Um, but I wanted to show you the variety of this really bright, vivid red that's darker, that medium purple, and then the white that gives that really light highlight that helps it pop. Earlier, I talked to you about getting paint on the edges. If that happened, don't worry. When your feathers dry, an adult's gonna come back through and trace over the edges to tidy it up. Good luck, I'm excited to see you.